Hello and welcome to It's All About You, the best show about you on the internet. I am B. Dave Walters, life strategist and spiritual coach. This is episode 16, Spirit. Now actually I have a pretty rare opportunity here where I'm going to get to shoot more than one episode here all at the same time. So I don't have to rush so much. So I think this is just going to be one episode, but maybe it's going to be two. Even I don't know. So I'm going to just start talking and let's see what happens. Um... Also, if you're seeing this on, I guess, uh, Sunday of February 28th, today's the last day of the 50% off sale on PeaceLoveMoney.com. So if you want any of my books, coaching, anything I've done, PeaceLoveMoney.com, you can get it half off. If you're watching this after February, still come to PeaceLoveMoney.com because I sell everything very cheaply because I want you to have it. Now, I talk all the time, I keep saying this thing about life strategist and spiritual coach, but I always sort of tiptoe around the spiritual part. Which is why I recently started doing um, a series of, of more more intense or focused spiritual writings that I've been putting up on PeaceLoveMoney.com. Because one of the things I always wanted to do is do more spiritual work and kind of help bring you know God and religion back to sort of the forefront of people's lives and kind of the center of people's existence. Because I think in recent years, really over recent centuries... God and religion have kind of gotten a bad rap, and I think a lot of things that individuals do and individual people do really kind of gets applied to all religious people as a whole, which is kind of why you have so many people saying I'm spiritual but not religious now. I actually wrote an article about that on the examiner.com. It was the second article I ever wrote for them, actually. It seems so long ago. In that, I think saying you're spiritual but not religious is really kind of a cop-out, to tell you the truth. Um, I mean, actually, hang on. We'll come back to whether or not you can be spiritual but not religious. Because I want to say something before I go too far here. Because, you know, I, I talk about these things like they're just absolutes. You know, like the like what I believe is the is the absolute truth no matter what. And I don't really think that. See, here's the thing. Nobody knows where we come from, and nobody knows what happens when we die, okay? Really, really, really believing it is not the same as empirical knowledge, okay? Nobody knows, and anybody who tells you they know for certain is probably trying to sell you something, or at least is going to ask you for a donation afterwards. So the fact is, we all got to try and figure this out for ourselves. In fact, since I didn't uh, start with a quote like I always do, let me give you a quote now. All complex things decay. Work out your own salvation with diligence. This is from Buddha. All complex things decay. Work out your own salvation with diligence. What this means is, you have to figure out the way for yourself. Okay? Now, if you're getting 100% fulfilled by everything that you're learning at your church or your temple or your mosque or your witch's coven or pagan circle or whatever it is you participate in, great. There's many, many, many paths up that mountain, okay? Now let me give you a little bit of background about me, since it's good when I don't have to rush. I was raised, I was born in Little Rock, Arkansas, which if you don't know the United States, that is the country. That's the South, okay? It's where Bill Clinton's from. And I was raised as a Southern Baptist, which is, you know, the Bible thumping, hellfire and damnation. Jesus is the only way. If you don't have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are going to hell. That's how I was raised, right? But even when I was young, I never understood why, and my Christian brothers and sisters, listen to me for a second. For my non-Christians, bear with me. It's not going to be all about Jesus, I promise you. I never understood why certain Christians took the fact that they were saved to mean that they were better than other people. I always felt that if you really believed, if you truly believed that anybody that didn't share your religious conviction was going to go and be tormented for all eternity, I would think that would fill you with more of a sense of compassion. I would think that would make you feel bad for these people rather than feel superior to these people. So even when I believed that, I wasn't the type of Christian that would really get in somebody's face about it, like, you're a sinner, right? I, it's just never how I was. So when the time came for me to go to college or university for my international brothers and sisters, I thought to myself, am I a Christian because I really believe in this religion? Or am I a Christian because this is what I was taught to believe? It's a different question. You know, 
second to your language, your religious beliefs are the number one thing you inherit from your family. That's the number one thing that you're raised with. For the most part, you probably believe whatever your parents told you to believe. For the most part, unless you rebelled against it, now you believe the polar opposite, right? So, when I went to school, I decided to study religion heavily, and I actually was going for a minor in religion, but I transferred schools, and I either could go to another year of school or drop the minor, so I dropped it. But that's kind of where I began this love affair with religion. And I just really started looking into the different spiritual beliefs and the different things that people are saying in this world. And let me tell you, all the world's religions are saying about 90% the same thing. The message is pretty much the same. Where you get into trouble is when you start trying to decide whose God-man is the only messenger of God, who's got the only truth, or who said it first, or who said it best. And that's when you can argue indefinitely, and if you look at the state of the world, there's probably been one or two wars behind whose God-man was the right one. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't really matter. And I can tell you why. Because if it makes sense to you, that Jesus Christ is the only Son of God, great. If it makes sense to you that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, great. If it makes sense to you that, you know, Joseph Smith was uh, the founder of Mormonism, was God's only, you know, legitimate prophet and that erased everything before it, great. If your beliefs make the world make sense, if you wake up every day happy and fulfilled, if you have a full and vibrant connection to your creator, if you feel like life is good and the world is good and you're happy, great. But if any of those things are lacking, then I think maybe you need to look a little bit closer. Because here's the problem. Over time, certain people in certain churches, in temples and mosques, not all, some, can get a little intoxicated by the power and influence that it allows you to have over other people. Think about this. If you can look at somebody and you're like, look, only I know what God wants. Only I know what God thinks. And if you don't do what I tell you to do, you will suffer for all eternity. Think about that. That's pretty massive, right? Now, my opinion is, is different from this, okay? I personally believe God is big enough to let you know what God wants you to know directly. This is what I never understood. Jesus Christ's whole message was the kingdom of heaven is within you. You do not need a middleman. You don't need the priest to go into the Holy of Holies to interpret for you. So why is it 2,000 years later, that's what pretty much everybody wants, right? Uh, especially, well, I won't name any specific faiths. But you don't need anybody to talk to God for you. Okay? That's the number one message of this first part, because since I'm not rushing, this first part is going by pretty quickly. But if you take anything from this, you do not need anyone to interpret God's will for you. Okay? God is more than capable of telling you what God wants you to know. All you have to do is listen. Use your own inner discernment. Listen to what's in your heart. Listen to what's in your mind. If you want to sit down with your holy book, if you want to sit down with your Bible or your Quran or your Gita and open it up and read it for yourself, that's great. And let the meaning come to you. Or if you want to participate in a spiritual community where you can dialogue and discuss, that's great too. I'm not saying give up meeting with one another. Far from it. I'm saying you don't have to have another person interpret for you. Okay? So I'm going to split this for my brothers and sisters on YouTube. Everybody else, hold on one second.